Introduction to Flight Training Introduction, the overall purpose of primary and intermediate flight training, as outlined, is the acquisition and honing of basic airmanship skills. Airmanship is a broad term that includes a sound knowledge of and experience with the principles of flight. The knowledge, experience and ability to operate an aircraft with competence and precision, both on the ground and in the air, and the application of sound judgment that results in optimal operational safety and efficiency. Learning to fly an aircraft has often been compared to learning to drive an automobile. This analogy is misleading. Since aircraft operate in a three-dimensional environment, they require a depth of knowledge and type of motor skill development that is more sensitive to this situation, such as coordination, the ability to use the hands and feet together, subconsciously, and in the proper relationship to produce desired results in the airplane. Timing. The application of muscular coordination at the proper instant to make flight and all maneuvers a constant, smooth process. Control touch. The ability to sense the action of the airplane and knowledge to determine its probable actions immediately regarding attitude and speed variations by sensing the varying pressures and resistance of the control surfaces transmitted through the flight controls. Speed sense, the ability to sense and react to reasonable variations of airspeed. Figure 1 1. Primary and intermediate flight training teaches basic airmanship skills and creates a good foundation for learners. An accomplished pilot demonstrates the knowledge and ability to assess a situation quickly and accurately and determine the correct procedure to be followed under the existing circumstance. Predict the probable results of a given set of circumstances or of a proposed procedure. Exercise care and due regard for safety. Accurately gauge the performance of the aircraft. Recognize personal limitations and limitations of the aircraft and avoid exceeding them. Identify, assess and mitigate risk on an ongoing basis. Good airmanship skills include sound knowledge of the principles of flight and the ability to operate an airplane with competence and precision. The development of airmanship skills depends upon effort and dedication on the part of both the learner and the flight instructor, beginning with the very first training flight, where proper habit formation begins with the learner being introduced to good operating practices. Every airplane has its own particular flight characteristics. The purpose of primary and intermediate flight training, however, is not to learn how to fly a particular make and model airplane. The purpose of flight training is to develop the knowledge, experience, skills, and safe habits that establish a foundation and are transferable to any airplane. The pilot who has acquired necessary skills during training and develops these skills by flying training type airplanes with precision and safe flying habits is able to easily transition to more complex and higher performance airplanes. Also note that the goal of flight training is a safe and competent pilot. Passing required practical tests for pilot certification is only incidental to this goal. Role of the flight instructor. The flight instructor is the cornerstone of aviation safety. In this role, the instructor assumes the total responsibility for providing training in all the knowledge areas and skills necessary for pilots to operate safely and competently in the national airspace system. This training includes airmanship skills, pilot judgment and decision-making, hazard identification, risk analysis, and good operating practices. A flight instructor normally meets broad flying experience requirements, passes rigid knowledge and practical tests, and demonstrates the ability to apply recommended teaching techniques before being certificated. A good flight instructor uses a syllabus and insists on correct techniques and procedures from the beginning of training so that the learner will develop proper habit patterns. The syllabus should embody the building block method of instruction in which the learner systematically progresses from the known to the unknown. The course of instruction should be laid out so that each new maneuver embodies the principles involved in the performance of those previously undertaken. Consequently, through each new subject introduced, the learner not only learns a new principle or technique, but also broadens their application of those previously learned and has their deficiencies in the previous maneuvers emphasized and made obvious. Safety considerations in the interest of safety and good habit pattern formation. There are certain basic flight safety practices and procedures that should be emphasized by the flight instructor and adhered to by both instructor and learner, beginning with the very first dual instruction flight. 
These include but are not limited to collision avoidance procedures, including proper scanning techniques and clearing procedures, runway incursion avoidance, stall awareness, positive transfer of controls, and flight deck workload management. Collision avoidance. All pilots should be alert to the potential for mid-air collision and impending loss of separation. This concept requires that vigilance shall be maintained at all times by each person operating an aircraft, regardless of whether the operation is conducted under IFR or VFR. Pilots should also keep in mind their responsibility for continuously maintaining a vigilant lookout, regardless of the type of aircraft being flown and the purpose of the flight. Most mid-air collision accidents and reported near-mid-air collision incidents occur in good VFR weather conditions and during the hours of daylight. Most of these accidents incidents occur within five miles of an airport and or near navigation aids. The see and avoid concept relies on knowledge of the limitations of the human eye and the use of proper visual scanning techniques to help compensate for these limitations. Pilots should remain constantly alert to all traffic movement within their field of vision as well as periodically scanning the entire visual field outside of their aircraft to ensure detection of conflicting traffic. Remember that the performance capabilities of many aircraft, in both speed and rates of climb descent, result in high closure rates, limiting the time available for detection, decision, and evasive action.